Hey people, welcome back. Got another tutorial for today. This one is going to be how to draw three really cool old school tattoo designs. It's going to be like step by step, talking through anything you need to know about them. Uh, I'm going to do like a kind of really cool swallow one, a really cool ship one, and a nice kind of snakehead style one. Um, they're all really cool designs that can pretty much work anywhere on the body. They're just really like ideal for anything. I'm going to be doing this on the iPad Pro, and this is in Procreate. The app is called Procreate. Um, the page size, I've got to say, is about A4. At 300 dpi but don't worry about it you can do it on paper as well you know it makes no difference it's just if you're if you've got procreate that's the general kind of setup um i'm gonna have a few different layers i'm gonna use a technical pencil so i'm gonna sketch in a technical pencil i'm gonna sketch everything out of the reds and then sort of come in detail with like the liners and stuff but i'll tell you which ones i use as i do those but yeah first off i'm gonna do uh the swallow design so i'm gonna start off with just sketching roughly I'm going to sketch in this rough crescent moon kind of shape. So I'm going to sketch like this, like this, so kind of sort of banana crescent moon. Try to get roughly even. It can be a little bit short on this side if you want, but roughly about evenish. Once you've got that done, we're going to bring this little curve just here, like so. And that's just going to create a base part of the heads. Once you've got that, you're going to create a little line just coming off, curving downwards, just up a touch. And curve down, come fairly low, but not all the way to the bottom, and then connect that up to the end, just like that. That's basically going to be like the swallow's back. Uh, just a general idea of you know the kind of sort of shape we're going for. I'm ready to much better the bottom for a minute for now. I'm going to sketch in a rough circle, roughly about here, so about halfway through the body. So about halfway. I'm going to sketch a rough circle in there, and a rough circle just on this other side around there. It's going to be the base part of the wing. So basically the wing's going to kind of curve around this and curve off. So we're going to curve a line around this. Make sure it's coming from like roughly within the back area. It's going to curve off. And you can make these as long or as short as you kind of want really. I like to make them roughly, say about the same kind of length as like from here to the end of the tail. So I'm going to curve off, flick outwards. I'm going to come down, you're going to mimic this line. Just leave a little bit of space so you kind of got this kind of border edge. And connect that back up like so. Do the same thing with the other side now. This one's going to curve out just a little bit higher. Bring it back, just create a little edge, just like so. Once on the inside part here, I'm going to create a semicircle shape, just curve like that. Another one just there. Another one connects to the outside. I might go one more just there and half one on that side. So, same on the outside, so one two, three. Don't worry about being neat at this stage, it's all about sketching, we're just kind of building up everything where it's supposed to be. Now coming out from the tips, we're going to create this curve line, come like this, and each one's going to loop off the next one, and they're going to slowly rotate and get shorter as we come inwards. Now you can create little kind of dip patterns where it goes a little bit lower than a bit higher. For this I'm going to keep this fairly simple and just give them like that. Now where this tail curves up, if you carry this line coming through, like this, and this line carry this up one coming through this way, and then just come down just to the touch and create these long kind of V-shapes coming off, it gives you your tail. It's a really simple kind of tail for these, but really effective. You can put a little bit in here if you want, it's up to you. Come just down here, inside this little kind of curve gap, I'm going to create a little kind of dot, going to curve back, and then kind of flick it outwards, and that's going to create the eye. So once I've got that done now, I'm going to add some background stuff, just to kind of like fill up the design so it's got a bit more to it. So I'm going to have a rose that's going to fit roughly in this location. I'm going to have this nice kind of red sort of sunset in the background with some old school stars kind of around it, like so. So I'm going to come down here, so I'm going to get a circle. I want to make sure that this rose isn't overly big, so I don't want it to be bigger than the swallow. Um, it's up to you to put on the design, but I generally prefer, I want the swallow to be the main feature, so I want that to be the biggest thing. So I'm going to sketch a small circle inside this circle now. I'm going to loop around, curve around, and come back, just like so. Coming off this edge, I'm going to create bump, I'm going to curve around, bump, curve around, until I come back around on it. Match up that line around that circle we just done. Do the same on the other side. And now around this edge, I'm going to split into five petals. 
So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and the fifth one would have been here. So if I have this, as if there was five around it. I always like to do five, five's kind of like my magic number for it. I'm gonna bring a V-shaped line coming outwards like this. I wanna create a curve. One, two, three coming up. One, two, three coming up. And create a little V-shape just at the top of that. Two little curves just off the edge. And a similar kind of leaf just here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three coming up. One, two, three coming up. I said, don't worry about too much about the detail. When we get to the pen, we'll sort of make it all kind of fine line detail. Right now, so it's all about kind of making sure that the size and everything's kind of where we want it. So now looking at it, I kind of realized I feel like this leaf's a little bit too big, so I can sort of adjust the sketch and make this a tiny bit smaller now. So that's your idea of sort of sketching, you know, because you don't want to sort of be set in stone from the get-go. I'm going to draw the circle in the background. I'm going to click, hold down, and it's going to draw a perfect circle for me. That's roughly where I want the circle to be. And then the background, I'm going to have stars. So I'm going to sort of even out, you know, roughly about the same sort of space apart. So I'm going to go about this sort of space between each one of these. I'm just going to mark out roughly where that would be, going from the center outwards. I'll try to get about as accurate as you can, you know, but don't worry about it if it's not 100%. We're just kind of marking out rough kind of locations, and each one is going to be a star. So basically, you can have a line from the top, two lines, line across. Really classic old school kind of star. You may just do this for all of them. They're going to be as big or as small as you want, really. Um, but just whatever size you do, just try to make sure that all of them are the same size or you just don't get the same kind of effect. Cool. And now we've got this done, I'm going to turn this transparency just down a touch. So if you've done a paper, you can kind of rub it out a little bit. And I'm going to go into the outline. It's so going to go black. I'm going to click a fix. I really like the monoline on this. You can use whichever one you want. Now there's quite a few good ones on the ink and this stuff, but I really like monoline because monoline just gets you a nice even set line the whole way through. So now we've got that done. Make sure you're on the layer above. I'm just going to go everything we've just done now. I'm going to make sure it's roughly about the same kind of width, so... I'm just going to sketch this all in. Be as neat as you can at this stage. You know, this is kind of like setting it in stone. So... We've gone past the sketching stage, so the sketching is basically our guidelines. And now you kind of want to be neat. Especially doing it on paper. So the good thing about you know the iPads is you can just tap two fingers and go back a step. Obviously on paper you can't quite do that, which is one of like the main downfalls of paper. Don't wrong, I absolutely love traditional paper. You know, traditional drawing, I still do that all the time. But yeah, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both digital and um, traditional. So just keep putting these all in, just going round and round. And just make sure you don't leave any kind of gaps between the bits. So basically we enjoy this up, make sure there's no kind of little gap like this. Make sure everything connects up nice and easy. Nice and neatly. They make it much easier when we're sort of colouring and shading. So if there is little gaps, you get this annoying thing where it just won't connect properly. I'm going to create this little dip just, just there, just where his neck would be, or her neck. Whichever it is you can make in. You know, so it's little, sometimes just those little details just really kind of make it nice. Oop, I'm just in there. See, so that's the outline for the swallow. So now the rose is going to sit on top of that, so I'm going to get the rose done next. So I said, just make it nice and neat. You know, but it is old school, so you do have a little bit of leeway, you know, it can be a little bit imperfect and still look perfect, if you get what I mean. You know, I think with old school, some of the uh, beauty of it is um, the imperfections rather than all the uh, 
perfections, I guess. <laughs> Don't know how else to kind of put that. But yeah, just keep this going nice and neat. So we're going to create these curves, curve, curve up here. Now whenever I do leaves, I always try them a little bit differently for you guys because there's just thousands of ways of doing leaves. So I try to show you guys as many ways as possible. Um, this is a really nice classic way of doing old school ones. And so it's got one curve, two curve, and the third one comes up to the point. One, two, little V-shape at the end. Get those little ones just on the outside part, just there. So now I'm going to get this part of the circle in here. If you're on paper, you know, I recommend getting yourself like a compass or something like that, you know, for perfect circles. You know, even the best of us, it can be a nightmare to try and freehand a perfect circle. You know, so yeah, just, just make life easier, get yourself a compass. They're not expensive, and you don't need an expensive one, they'll do the same thing. You know, I mean, a few of my, I've got some nice compasses, I can't lie, but I have some compasses in my drawer that literally like cost me like 99p. And to be honest, they're just as good as the expensive ones. The only difference with the expensive ones is that they look a little bit flashy and sometimes they have a tiny little extra feature, but you don't need that. You know, it's, you know, sometimes you need good quality with stuff, sometimes the quality just doesn't make no difference. You know, if it comes to sort of say like pens, paints, you know, then yeah, you want the good stuff. You know, but um, yeah, with this you don't really need that. So once you've got all your line work sort of sketched in there, nice and neat, turn off your sketching layer. So you've got your nice design like this. Click on your line work layer and click reference this way just here. Basically what that's gonna do, we're gonna create another layer underneath that we're gonna do the shading on. It's gonna make it so we can now select inside any one of these uh, shapes. So click up here, selection tool, automatic down the bottom. Now a lot of people ask me about this, click, and drag across and you'll see it's got selection threshold. As long as it's in the high 90s, you won't get this annoying little white edge. If you get the white edge, just do what I said, just click and drag and you get that, okay? I think I get asked about that probably about, I couldn't even count how many times a day I get asked that one. I think it's the most common question I get asked. It's like, how'd you get rid of the white line? And say, like, just watch what I tell you. So we're gonna go black, I'm gonna do it in this, bottom, uh, in this um, Belly bit to begin with, so on the back, in the belly on the back, why am I saying belly? On the back. So I'm going to come across here, I'm using a spray paint tool, so click up here, I've got a spray paint, medium nozzle, and I'm leaving, leaving like this nice little highlight just across the edge. Now it kind of gives the same sort of effect you would get if you were doing it with water paints, you know, because a lot of the old school ones are classically done with water paints, so. A bit of black, just kind of fading out from this tail upwards, just there. I'm going to go inside these wing parts, just here. I'm going to go black very heavily, but fading out very quickly from the bottom. You know, the idea is you're kind of sort of mimicking sort of like water paint kind of style, you know, because most old school stuff was originally done with watercolors, so you're kind of mimicking that kind of vibe. Same thing here on this, so I'm going to go black on these leaves on the bottom and fade out fairly quickly. Now, you want a nice, trans smooth transition, you know, just be fairly kind of short, but you don't have to be like evenly like fade out the whole way up. You can do if you want and it still looks nice, but I don't know, just getting that kind of short kind of fade just looks really good but old school. So I'm going to come inside loose now, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to put a little bit of black fade just in the center of each one of these petals where it can be seen. Just like so. It's going to slow this, I'm going to get a little bit of black just down this corner. Just there. a little bit under the I try not to have black on black. So if there's black on, the, um, uh, say like here, you've got black on this bit, so I try not to put, not to put too much black there because it's just going to phase into each other. The only time I tend to do that, and that's if I'm doing, say, like hair and stuff, because you kind of want that effect with hair. But on something like this, you don't particularly want that effect, so you won't particularly do that, if you get my gist. So click up. 
Got another layer underneath now, so you've got line work, shading, then we're going to do colour. It's going to be a fair bit of red in this one. But red is a very beautiful classic old school colour. So I'm going to start off with... Actually, maybe not too much red, because I want to do the belly and red and stuff. I'm going to have this, actually, I'm going to change, sorry. Change my mind. Classic old school... Orange. Pretend we've never done that. Now I'm going to go to red. So basically I want red on this belly part, coming up here, but fading out before it gets to the face, just like that. Now that's just classic swallow. I might even change that background there to yellow, I'll see. I know, I get funny when there's too much of one colour sometimes. But I'll see. Bring this down a touch. So I want this nice kind of red fade. I want it fading out. As it gets to the edge of the uh, petals just there. Just one of the ways of doing it, I just really like that effect. Inside bit just solid red. I think I'm gonna add these bits the same kind of colour. I'm gonna go, I might go for that flame orange orange edge on these. Yeah, I'm gonna go flame orange on those. And if you've done it orange, don't worry about it, you can keep it orange. I'm just changing my mind with this as I do quite a lot. Yeah, for that yellow. Boom. So I'm going to go yellow there. I'm going to go yellow on here. On those bits. I'm also going to have yellow inside these parts of the wings, but I'm also going to then hit with this nice kind of caramel tone. Just coming up from the edge, like so. You can use the orange if you want because it's very similar, but I'm just, I quite like my caramel tone. Inside these spaces, just it. I'm going to go green. So I've got this nice old school kind of army kind of green. Just like so. And I'm going to go inside of these. For these, I'm going to slip me like a nice kind of brownish kind of tone, I think. You can go black if you want. And I might do this with the calligraphy to get a nice perfect line. Because sometimes it's nice to have a nice perfect line. Yeah, I like that. So just leaving a little white edge. I'm going to do it layer by layer. So basically row by row. Just like that. Just like that, so you're leaving a little white edge just on those top bits, just like so. And again, just up here. Just like so. And lastly, it's going to go back to the spray paint tool. Bit of black. Just inside that row, it's just there. And tell a lie. One last little bit. A little bit red just on the tail there. So that's how you draw a nice old school swallow design. And I really like that. So now we've got that done, I'm basically just gonna go group these three layers together and I'm gonna move this one just over here somewhere. Just like uniform so it moves everything nice and evenly. So yeah, that's one old school design. I might just turn those off for now so we can see what we're doing on this next one. So going back to the sketching tool again, I'm going to start over with our next design. So the next one we're going to go for the ship, I think. So for the ship, new layer, sketching, technical pencil, dark red. I'm going to sketch in a circle with another little circle inside it. It's going to roughly be the rose, so it's going to be like the base, you know, everything's going to kind of sit for this. After this, I'm going to have one, two, three, maybe four. Just kind of loose, just kind of, kind of create a base, so basically the boat can kind of sit within this. You know, I just think it's always nice to kind of give a base to the boat. I'm going to create a few of these kind of little wavy lines just here. Just go up, down, up, down, just flick it across. Just put a few for now, just create a little bit of water, again, it's just to kind of give the boat something to sit in. And once we've got it done, we can kind of sort of start 
building up the design. So I'm going to be this little curve here like this. I'm going to create this curve across. Create a nice little bit. Make sure it's got like a nice little dip here. Now it's just based roughly the rough kind of shape, you know. So it's basically going to be the base of the boat. Don't worry too much about the detail at this point. We're just kind of creating a rough shape. In. And once we've got that done, I'm going to create this line up. Work out the kind of height we want for the sails. I like my sails to be really nice and tall. And I generally have, you know, anywhere between sort of like four, five, six, you know, um, cells. So once you've got this up, we're going to bring our line across, like so. I'm going to bring in two lines like this. So basically, crack these ones because sort of going to go a bit diagonally inwards. And then from the edge here, I'm going to bring this line up, curving up to that top point, just like so. And then from there, we're going to create a line one. Two, three, four. So basically just dividing up the cells here. And then once you've got that, just check if you want to try, you know, adjust your angle of them. And I'm looking at this, I want to slightly adjust your angle a bit, so just add a bit more kind of tilt that way, which I like. And once you've got this done, just create similar lines behind it, just a little bit lower than each one of these. And you're basically going to mimic those lines. So I'm going to bring that line down like so. And then you can create a third set if you want. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And this bottom one, but this bottom one's just going to create a little loop on the inside. So it's not going to be the same kind of cell. Again, just bring those lines up, just like so. So you're basically just building up the kind of shape. So you've got your cells, you've got the base boat. You know, then basically off this line here. So bring a little line just in the middle of it to find the center of the boat. I'm going to create the spike at the front. Just like so. So create this nice kind of spike coming off. Following the rough sort of direction of it like this. And then from here, we're going to bring this curved line coming up. I like to go about sort of two cells up. Now I'm going to bring this little line curving across. And this one curving this way. Okay, another line underneath. Curving up. Another line. Curving up. So you've basically got these front kind of cells, like so. In that rough position. So once we've got this, we kind of have the guideline for everything we kind of need to make the boat, the rows. You know, the background, don't worry too much. We're going to create these uh, semicircles, which I'm going to roughly sketch, but we'll talk in more detail as we do them, just to create a little bit of cloud background. You know, but don't worry too much about those. We'll just go through that as we get to it. But for now, we're going to go into the boat and just make it more detailed so we've got everything the way we want it to be. So where we've got this boat bottom, we've got this curve. So we're now going to mimic that line and create a secondary line. Just to kind of give like a rim to the tip of the ship. Inside that you can create these little dots if you want, about even space apart. It's a really nice classic old school pattern, you know, little dots inside the space. Um, it's really effective and just really looks cool. It's going to reinforce these shapes, just make them a bit more kind of curves, a bit more dynamic. Oh, sorry about that, the battery just died for a split second. But anyway, we're back. So you've got these mini cells here down the front. So now we're going to focus on getting these back cells exactly how we kind of want these. So I said this bottom one. I got my mini cells sitting in front, so I ain't got to worry about drawing a line behind these. Just know roughly where that line would go. I'm going to bring this line out like so. I'd like to bring it out just a little bit further than what I put these lines at. Ugh, I really battery away down the pen now. And once you've got that done, I like to bring this curve just there. So it comes a little bit further inwards from that line. I like to just have this little bit of an edge. Um, that's personal preference, you don't have to do that, but um, yeah, I, I like it. The secondary line just curve from the outside, but that we can kind of connect up. And then from here, you want to create this curve, kind of like so, to the ends. Now you've got to remember, because of the angle, the height of this kind of curve is going to be more to this side than it is this side. Just a fraction, not massively. But just a little bit, and you're gonna do the same sort of thing for each one of these now. So I'm gonna bring that curve line just there. Bring this line out like so. And then like I said, you're gonna get these little curved lines like this, curving up to each one. I'm gonna put in each one of these lines and then sort of just do them all in one go so you can kind of see the pattern of where they kind of connect. So you basically want to get this nice kind of rhythm going with these, so it all kind of matches up. 
Now, if they're not quite even, they don't, doesn't really look right in my opinion. You know, it's got to be a nice systematic kind of flow to them. Like so, I like that. And once you've got that done, just get that same curve going for the bottom of each one of these. So I said, remember that, make sure the curve's just a little bit more to that side than it is the other side. It hasn't got to be massive, just a fraction. So yeah, I'm liking those kind of front cells now. So now I'm going to put those lines for the secondary cells just behind. So we're just mimicking those same sort of lines, just a fraction lower. Get roughly about the same kind of height on each one of these. So it's that same distance between each rough gap. I'm well, saying that mine's a bit uneven, but as long as you get them roughly. And connect these up again. Like so. Uh, you don't necessarily have to bother with these little lines if they want, you know, because they're so little in, in comparison to the uh, the general concept of the picture because it's where it's in the background, you can't really see much of them. I mean, you can do if you want, you know, we'll put them in there just for the sake of putting them in there, I guess. Um, a lot of time, I wouldn't really bother with those. And then we're going to go to the third set now. So, I'm going to get this line. Remember, this bottom one of the cells is going to start different. You're going to create a curve, and then a second curve, as if like the cells kind of rolled up. And just bring these lines again. Just next to each one of these, roughly about the same height. Connect those up like that. So you've got your three cells there, so you get this nice sort of dynamic kind of repetition coming across. You know, and that's uh, part of the key to the um, sort of style of the ship, in my opinion. So on the top here, I've got a line coming up the center for the center part of the. Um, I'm going to two lines just coming off the side like so. I'm doing this as imagine it's on kind of each one, but maybe not the last one. And it's going to have a flag just coming off the top, just there. You can have a secondary flag on the other ones if you want, but not necessary if you don't want to. Little details you can put on here. You can always have a line either side like this and go the whole way down if you want. Um, you can leave looking put little tears and sort of rips and stuff before like a little bit of ghost ship um i quite like doing this just a real simple little detail but really effective so these little flick lines coming up same distance apart just coming across with just a hint of a curve to each one of them Just a hint where you can see it on the other ones. You know, it'd probably just be like one or two in each one if you can, depending on how far you've gone out with them. But you know, if it's going to be on the edge of here, I wouldn't bother really sort of doing it. If it's going to be like overlapping your lines, it's just pointless adding. So that's the base part of the ship done now. So I'm going to do the rows detail and then we sort of build the waves and everything around it. And the row is very simple, like we just done the other one. You know, keep the same kind of style going with them. So I'm going to create this loop, loop around one. This one I might create a little bit of a point, two, three. Just so it's the same, but just a fraction different. And you've got these two curves, which is kind of around here. And then again, I'm going to turn five petals around the outside. So I'm going to start with the bottom. One, two, Three, four, five, and just increase the size a little bit so they're going to match up. Yeah, let's bring that one out just a fraction, just there, I think. Yeah, I like that. That'll do. So, I got the least now. I'm going to bring in a line coming outwards, curving back, like so. Same the other one. I don't want to go too complicated because I'm going to have them kind of layer on top of each other. So for an old school kind of design like this, when they kind of layer up, sometimes simple is better. 
but just working the same concept for each one of these. Just getting slowly thinner as we get higher. Just do the same on the other side. I like it to be like perfectly um, matching. So I'm just going to copy paste that section, just flip it around. And just put on the other side so. Just speeds up. You can draw it out, but it just makes it easier. And once you've got that on the side, if your rose is in the right spot or not. I'm looking now, I think I might just made it over a touch. Oops, to do that. Sorry. Just going to merge that down just so it's all one layer now. I'm just going to select that rose bit. I'm just going to move that over just a fraction. Like so. There you go, like that. Right, back to sketching now. So I'm going to start with these waves again. Remember, so we had a minute, we just sketched roughly, so I'm going to create a curve. Create a curve, and sometimes create three if you want. And you want to kind of angle them so they kind of feel like they're sort of dragging in a direction. You know, because they are waves. You know, they're not puffy clouds, they're not anything else. So you get the rough sort of shape for them, just kind of wiggle lines across. And once you've got that, you can do little detail bits on the inside. So just pick up some shapes, you know, go high, low. You know, again, just, just make sure they're all kind of following the same rough direction. You know, to me, the waves, the, you know, the key to the waves is getting the uh, directional kind of vibe. You know, it's got to feel like it's moving with it. So once you've got the waves in there, it's pretty much just the clouds. So going to create the same circle shape. Semicircle. Gonna sort of vary the heights of them and sort of you know sizes. I mean you can just do the same kind of you know one over and over again like that and just repeat that up if you want. Um I like to have different kind of size ones. That's just my personal preference. Just gonna put some up there, I'm gonna have some coming this way. I'm gonna flip this around because I find then semicircles more comfortable like this than I do the other way around. You might be the same, you might find this motion just more comfortable in one sort of the way, so flip your paper around to kind of get that kind of comfortable sensation. So here we go, put some clouds on the outside. That's some little birds, some little V-shaped birds just around it if you want. Just kind of finishes off the top of it. And then once you've got that done, again, I'm just going to go to inking it now, so create another layer on top. I'm going to go calligraphy, black, make sure I've got the right size. Yeah, I'm going to go about this size, I think. And yeah, just go over everything you've just done again now, just in a nice fine line. And just this is where you kind of want to be neat again. You know, we've done our sketching now, so now it's time to neaten it all up. So just kind of whip it in now. I'm going very fast. Don't worry about going the same speed as me. And I've done this countless times over and over, so I don't have to worry about too much. And it's always way. Once you've drawn something a hundred times over, you can kind of pretty much get blindfolded. I might have to try it actually. See what I can draw blindfolded. That could be an interesting video. Maybe after a lockdown, I have to get my team in, sort of all take it in turn to see who can do the best drawing blindfolded. Yeah, I'm so doing that. So I'm just randomly talking to myself here, just getting random ideas. So let's keep whipping in these lines. And now take your time if you need to, don't sort of feel like you have to go to the same speed. I tend to do these pretty quick. I'm doing sort of YouTube videos. Um, if I was doing this, say, a commission off my own tattoo, I'd probably take a bit longer on it. So, you know, don't feel like you have to rush. You know, I'm not rushing, I'm just, well, I'm not rushing. This is just kind of like my nice, kind of comfortable kind of sketch flow. But like I said, you know, just go as slow as you need to. You know, it's all about the end product. You know, if it takes you 10 times longer, but the design comes out better, then that's better in the long run, you know. It's, not about the speed. You know, speed is nice, 
but it's not necessary. You know, especially if it's going to affect the quality in the end. You know, always try to keep the end quality in mind. Let's keep it in there, make sure they're nice and exactly how you want these lines. And try to make sure they're all nice and connected so you don't leave like little gaps. So don't do this. So we're going to bring this line across. So when you do a line like this, make sure you don't leave little gaps. We want it all connected because it's going to make shading it a lot easier. You know, I think it's just good practice, you know, just getting your lines to connect properly. You know, in tattooing, it's really, really frustrating when people leave little gaps like that, especially in something that's not supposed to have those kind of gaps. You know, I mean, there's always going to be exceptions for certain styles and that, but something like old school, you don't want that. You know, it goes against what it is. Just keep throwing these lines in. God, man, I do love doing this, especially old school, just kind of throwing in these lines. I think it's just really funny when you're not actually sort of drawing for anything particular. It's just really fun way of drawing once you get the hang of it. And then let's get these cloud lines. And then I might come in just with a little thinner line, I just do the few little details. You know, most old school things are generally done with one sort of. See, I don't like doing my curves that way, get my nerves. I was gonna say, like, most old school designs are generally done with like one line width, um, but there are exceptions, you know, and I like breaking the rules, you know, because I think it looks really good to have in, like, sometimes too, you don't want to go too many, because you go too many, you go into like near trad territory, which is cool, but it just takes away from it being old school and classic. So I'm going to shrink my line down now, like this, I'm going to have these inner wave lines being smaller line widths. Whip these in here. See little dots just coming through this part of the boat or ship. Just increase them so slightly, just do these little flicks. So you put those little flicks, just literally just flick them in. Just make sure you don't miss any little bits. I think that's good for the ship. Just put my little V-shapes for my birds. These little lines just tip and do these ones with a thinner line. And you can always add little lines just in the boat as well for like little sort of like netting or rapey bits and stuff. You know, a little line for the mast if you want. Let's increase the size of that so that sort of goes there. So just trying to match this up roughly. It's not going to be perfect, but you can always get paired with a ruler and stuff if you want. So you get like a little mask again down it. And once you've got that done again, just flick off the uh, shading. Click on that, click reference, create another layer underneath for your shading. So again, I'm going to go spray paint tool because I really like using my spray paint tool. 
selection tool, automatic. And again, just make sure it's in the high 90s when you're selecting and then you won't get that annoying edge. So we'll start off with the kind of leaf bits just here. I'm gonna go black on one side. Just gonna do one leaf at a time on each side, just so we're kind of overlapping. Like so. I'm gonna get my ship on one half. Like so. Just a little bit of fade just there, and then on this little part here, just a little bit of black on the other side, I like to do just like that. I'm gonna select these inner wave areas now. So the ones we've done with the thinner line on the inside parts. Just select inside those. I'm gonna have a little bit of black, just coming down from the top. Not going the whole way through them. Just like that. So you've got this nice kind of fade down, which I really like. Once we've got that done, I'm gonna select the cells. And our cells, there's quite a few ways you can do cells. You can do a bit of shadow from say the corners. You can do shadow from the top down. You can do shadow from the bottom up. You can do shadow from bottom up and cross top if you want to do it nice and dark. Personally, I just prefer the simple top. I usually change it up each time I do a ship, but the one I usually do the most is this effect just across the top. You know, it's simple but effective. And it just gives like a really nice kind of clean sort of shading effect to the whole design. And so I should get these in one. Oops. And get those last ones just around the back. And you've got these front ones just here. I'm going to go from the bottom bits. I go black from one side across, from one side across. And from one side across, just like that. Once you've got it done, I mean, you can always add a bit of black on the inside if you want, but you want to be kind of careful not to add too much black. You know, just kind of underneath the cells if you want. But um, I'm not going to do that. I think for me, that's enough kind of black in the areas. I might just put a little bit just in the petals, but then that'd be it. So a little bit of black just. Send apart of each one of those petals. Just like that, a little fade, nothing crazy. And then underneath, I'm gonna to go to color. So I'm gonna start off with red, that's a nice strong color. So I'm gonna color in a rose to begin with. I'm gonna shrink this down, a bit of similar to what we've done before, um, just a bit more close to the edge this time. Now you can go like fine line if you want and get like the uh, click through pen and sort of make it exactly kind of up to line, but I'm just gonna kind of blur it out a touch. Yeah, I like that. It's got a nice kind of feel to it. Now I'm gonna select these shaded leaves. I'm gonna select like a nice kind of army green. Just put that behind those. Oh, missed one there. Then on the other side, I'm going to do the same. We're just coming up from the bottom parts like this. I mean, this is not traditionally sort of an old Scottish way of doing it, but I just think it looks really nice. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to create another ledge just underneath. Select those. Go to yellow, yellow on the outside. I don't know why, I just love that effect. I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna get some yellow. I center part of the ship just there. I'm gonna get some brown, some nice caramelly light brown. 
just in that part of the ship just there. The bottom part of the waves. I'm gonna get a nice kind of faded old school blue. Fade that down like so. The top parts I'm gonna get a little bit of a kind of kind of creamy kind of tone. Turn that down, touch, but kind of sort of creamy, kind of grey. I don't know why, but I just kind of like, like having that across the top of them. Again, it's personal preference, but I think that's cool. A little bit of colour in the centre part of this rose now. Just black out that centre of it. Ooh, there's up to you if you want to put colour behind the clouds and stuff. Um, if you can do that, the best selection here, because they're not connected, is just to kind of like use the freehand selection tool. Kind of draw around them, give a nice big kind of space around the outside. Going to go spray paint with the black. I'm just going to put a little bit of black just behind them. Nothing crazy. You know, if you had like a frame around this, you could probably add more color on the inside. I mean, I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a red fade just on the inside. Well, sorry, not the inside. Run it outside of the ship. That's what I quite like to do. So I'm gonna go automatic, select the outside, select any areas where this kind of like, not the cell bit. So these little bits just behind here. Bits. I'm just going to go red. Just put a little bit of red burst just behind it. And then what I might do just on the inside part of these cells, just hit on this side. That's a bit of red fade just coming across, just like that. Possibly. No, nope, change mind. Don't like that. Yeah, that'll do it for the, uh, for the ship. So that's how to do an old school ship. So again, that's gonna go cross, cross, cross. Kind of group those together. We can move this one now over this way. So we've got that one and we have that one. Just the size of that one just a touch. So you got those two. So now we're gonna have one more. So we're gonna have like an old school kind of snake design, I think. So you can turn those off, just create another new layer, dark red, sketching, technical pencil. So I'm zoom this in so we've got everything nice and where we want it. So I'm gonna create this kind of oval shape like this. Create this sort of triangle bit just here at the front. And just coming off of this, we're going to create this loop around. It's going to come like this. Now from here, we're going to cut a line across like this. And a line across like this. So it's going to give us a rough sort of point for the mouth. You know, and we will slightly change it, but it's just kind of give an idea of where everything's going to kind of go. Where you got this line and this line in the middle of it. You can do a circle. It's going to be roughly where we were uh, when our eye. I'm going to create this curve coming down, coming outwards. Curve this down. Then on this bit, I'm going to go circle, 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 circle. Coming back roughly about. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. More interruptions. Right, so now we've got this, you can see it's kind of almost like the skeleton. So you've got everything roughly where we kind of need the base sort of pieces. Um, once you kind of go to stage, it's all about you know, sort of like pattern work and getting everything to look really cool. So from here, you know, imagine two curves off here. Would be your two main teeth. I'd like to have the second tooth just there. In between, it's going to have like a curve. There's going to be two more teeth just here, and then the tongue's going to kind of come out like so. So now we've got this done. I'm just going to turn this down a touch, and we're going to go top now and just kind of detail everything the way it should be.
So you see, this is the sort of top part of my house. Gonna come here, gonna create this nose to begin with. So we're gonna come here, curve this way across. Like this. So we've got this shape. And curve up, and when we add that triangle shape, it's going to curve it down so it's a bit more sort of curved around the edge. This can come down, and create two nostrils just in there, like that. Once you have this line, we can bring this line back, and this is going to create this, the uh, base part of where the mouse is going to go. So, once this kind of line comes here and ends, we're going to start creating loops, so we're going to create these kind of curved shapes. Just going to keep adding these up, slowly getting bigger. You don't want to get massive, but just slowly getting bigger as come across until we get to the back one just there. And once we have that, we're going to create this line. Curve off here. We're going to make it a bit more dynamic than a straight line. So we know it wants to go in this direction, but we're going to create this curve. And it's going to curve a little bit like this. So you see, just makes it a bit more interesting so it's not quite as basic. And from there, we're going to create a curve. Curve. I'm going to keep getting smaller and slightly longer until we get to the end, just like that. So that space builds up the uh, the base part of the mouth. And create this curve on the inside. These little loops on the inside now create like the inner gum piece. And now we've got this. Where this line curves here, we're going to bring this back. And we want to curve this around. And I always do the mouth first because it's important because we want to make this sure this curve comes around mm -hmm. that area and fills up the space nicely and curves down to this point. You know, if you do this line first, it means you have to try and, try and squash this inner space. I prefer to draw that first and then you can kind of position that around the outside so you get the right kind of height. Now we've got that done, we can start working up around this little eye area. So I'm going to create this loop here. It's going to create this pattern part coming to the top. So create this top part of the head. And once we have this loop, we can go and create a secondary line which is going to curve around that sort of circle shape of the eye. And this is going to curve down, I think. So we're going to curve there. And from here, create a secondary one. So you're basically like, you know, enclosing that circle. So that part of the eye. A little slit down the middle for the eyeball, just like so. I'm going to create a secondary line just here around the bottom bit. It just kind of gives a bit more sort of shape to the eye, which I quite like. I'm going to create this another dip. It's going to come like this and curve back up. And then inside this dip, we're going to create a secondary line, just creating this little curve space. Just like so. I like how that's looking. It's going to curve out. I'm going to repeat this coming across, so I might get one or two more out of this. I think one, I think two stretching it. So that's going to come to you there. And what's got to do, I'm going to go back to the mouth, finish the mouth before we go to the body. So I'm going to create this too, so I'm going to create this curve, loop it around, create this curve, loop it around. And once I've got that, I'm going to create a little bit of gum just to kind of connect it. So this little gum is going to sit behind it, come across to this back tooth. And then that can just kind of disappear behind the mouth bit just there. I don't tend to bother too much doing the gum on the bottom. Um, I think sometimes it makes it feel like it's a little bit too much gum if you do that. And I'm not really a fan of that. I don't like my snakes to be too gummy. So I'm going to create this curve coming out. This is going to curve out like so. I'm going to bring this back, make a little slit. So I'm going to create like a little V shape. I'm going to curve back. Then as we get here, it's going to get larger and curve into the tongue, into the mouth. Now what I'd like to do here is just create this little line on the back, just to kind of give a hint of where the back of the mouth would be. Just like so. And once we have that, we've got to work out how sort of wide we want this belly to be. So I'm looking at, I think in those bits there, it's a little bit too wide. So I'm going to create two lines just across like this. So you've got this nice tunnel sort of shape. And from here, we're going to create these circles. So they're going to loop around like this. It's going to loop around that. It's going to loop there. Loop there. And loop there. I'm going to create this line to the back. Another little loop is coming around the top. It just kind of sort of seal it off. 
You know, I mean, you can go on forever, you can have it kind of curving around and stuff. I want to make this sort of solid bulb snake cut sort of section, which I already like. And once we get this done, I'm going to create this little wave just here. And I'm going to bring in lines come across like this, and then lines come across the other way for a little bit of a pattern work just through the center part of the body, which I already like. And then the background, we're going to have a little rose behind him. So I'm going to do the same kind of rows done before. Just like so. Maybe another one just on this side of him. Just to kind of mirror that. Just kind of like that. Let's create a little few little leaf, bit, leaf bits. Just make sure they're the right kind of height and taking out the right kind of space. There we go, I like that, I think that's got a nice kind of vibe to it. And now we've got it done, same thing again. Just gonna go above, gonna go black, calligraphy, one line, get this back right. I'm just gonna go over everything we've just done again. Just make sure everything's nice and neat this time. I don't got me, it was fairly neat before. I've done a pretty good job of that sketch. I think the things I sketch so much now, like when I sort of do, like, you know, it still looks pretty cool in the sketch. I think sometimes I prefer the sketch to the finished piece. I'm really love it. I really love sort of sketch style in a minute. So I keep putting these lines in. Just one by one. And like I said, it's not a race, you know, don't feel like you have to go the same speed. You know, it's all about the end product in the end. Almost at that line. There we go. So just keep throwing these in there, just getting them where they need to be. You know, and I think it's just it really good that I, mean, I know you put me for David, just really try and take pleasure in this kind of part, you know, just like really enjoy this. You know, for me this is always like my favourite part of drawing. I love, I love just this, you know, it's it's relaxing, it's calming. You know, the end product's always good, you know, but it's just part of the process that I just kinda of does it for me. You know, I'm not necessarily talking about like line work, I'm just talking about the actual process of the drawing. You now a lot of time I get kind of sad when I kind of get towards the end of a drawing, you know, because I don't want to kind of like finish it. I'm really into doing it, so I hate it to come to an end. I know a lot of artists have that as well, you know, like um, especially when it comes to certain things. Uh, there's a few artists I know are amazing, but when it comes to selling their work, they have a really hard time letting go of the pieces. Because you get really attached to it, you know, you enjoy it, it becomes a memory. Yeah, it can be kind of hard to sort of try and sell a memory sometimes. You know, whenever I sort of do a picture, I was trying to keep hold of it for a while, so I kind of like, I don't know, get my sort of satisfaction out of it, you know, before I sort of, you know, sell it and make it go onwards. You know, it's been ages drawing it, you want about to, like, you know, appreciate it for a bit, so. Yeah, I think I'd have a really hard time sort of doing a design and sort of letting it go instantly. You know, when you're tattooing it, it's kind of different because you get to draw it again, so it's not too bad doing it that way, but... but yeah, I'm just rambling on here, I think. So just keep throwing this all in there. You find after you've done so many sort of like you sort of say rays and stuff and like the uh, motion for certain parts become like second nature. Like doing the petals and the leaves, you know, you just find you start doing them like super quick and easy. Oh my 
ました。もですね。It's amazing just how many different ways our idea leaves. I was doing differently. Right, I'm going to take my line right now. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Just for certain little details, nothing too crazy. Just a little bit repeti uh, repeti repetitive lines. Um, just down the gum. I'm going to put. So I'm just here inside this belly. Yeah, what's going on that line? And just get this design pattern work just here in the back done. Now like I said like most old school stuff is usually the same kind of size and line width, but it's nice to sometimes break the rules. It does work on occasion. Now as long as you're not going overboard with it. That. And now I'm just going to put some dots, I think, inside these spots. And a little line just down here. And I think that'll do it for the pattern work, so I can turn off that sketching layer now. Where did that line come from? So once you've got that done, just click on it, click reference, create a layer underneath. We're going to go back to the spray painting tool. So we're going to start off all the black first. Just going to select this area just here. All black coming down from the top. Leaving a little highlight space just around the outside part. Until we get to the eye, I want to go black around the eye part. These little sections at the top, just going to go black from one side. Like so, inside this mouth, a little bit of black just there, a little bit of black so inside part of the eyes, just there, black out that section, the leafy bits. Inside petal bits. Just like that. I'm going to select these bits just in. I'm going a little bit of black, just around the corner, I think. There we go. I think that's a nice amount of black. Might just have a little bit just around the bottom part of this mouth. Just there. And lastly, I'm going to use the freehand tool bit for this. It just makes it easier. Rather than selecting every single little box inside this area. This little pattern work we've just done here. Some black from one side, some black from the other. So that's it for my black. So I'm going to create a layer underneath now. I'm going to go red to begin with, I think. Because we want our roses red, you know, we've done that for the others, so we're going to have that kind of matching up with these. I'm going to use these ones with the uh, calligraphy, just to make them a tiny bit different. And I'm just going to leave a nice, kind of like white highlight edge, just on the inside of each one of these. Just like so. Do the same on this top part just here. Now 
because sometimes you can make things the same and you know and make them different at the same time you know and it won't look out of place that's what just shows you guys just a few other ways of doing it see how some petals of the roses done now, the colored areas that I know I want certain colors so I know for a fact I'm gonna go spray paint all this quicker I want the mouth, the upper gum, and a bit behind the eyes red. I know I want that for a fact. I know I want these inner belly bits here, red, for a fact. And then and I want these areas just here. This inside part is just that. And the inside part of the mouth, I know I want these yellow. So I said the areas that you, you, you know, if you're not too sure on what colours to do certain areas, just do the areas you know you want to colour first and then kind of come back to the others. I'll do a little bit of yellow just down from the top of that nose. Yeah, I like that. Inside this part of the mouth here. Oh, I almost selected it. There we go. I'm going to add these like a sort of purplish kind of tone. Just like so. This back bit here, I think I'm going to have this blue. Just like that, like that. I know I want the leaves green. So I'm going to go with that army green that I've used on the others as well. I'm going to make these kind of like a sort of caramelly kind of sort of tone. And these areas I've done the same on the others, I think, so I'm going to do that kind of brownish kind of grey tone just across the top kind of black out or well, maybe not black out just go like that and then I can sort of work out one for the other colours thinking possibly orange Mm, not too sure about the orange actually. I think I might go for it's not on my colour palette, but I kind of like this colour. Yeah, I like that. Though not for the inner part of the mouth. The inner part of the mouth, I'm thinking maybe grey. Yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to get this area just in here. I'm going to put grey as well, I think, for that. It just kind of carries that through. Go back to see what's about it. I'm going to have some golden tones on these inner rings of the belly. And this back part just here. And then lastly, I'm going to go for that same colour I was used on the uh, back in the eyes. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks cool. Let's screw that together. Let's turn those other ones back on. Let's move this down where he's not going to be in the way. Yeah, I think that actual angle looks pretty good. So yeah, you got the first one we done. You got the swallow. You got the old school boat just there to the side. You got the snake. So yeah, just three really nice classic old school designs. They're just really fun to draw. You know, really bold, really stand out. You know, but I hope you guys like that. You know, make sure you leave a like, comment. You know, it always really helps. Check my videos. I am the Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time, people. Peace. Thank you.